Okay, guys, so we're looking at the uh, Tacom Bergy Panzer 2A2. There was a previous version of this. I think it was a Bergy Panzer 2. I'm not too sure. Anyways, I don't even know what's different about this kit, but it's a new one. Because it was a new one, it was available. The other ones have been sorted out. So what it says in the box it says it's a static model. We knew that. It's got an articulating recovery boom, so you can play with it. It's got clear parts. A figure is not included. There's eight types of markings and there's workable tracks. Workable tracks are meant to be pretty good on this, we'll see. Um, there's a few pictures. And as usual, with Tacom, you get the whole sprue layout on the box. So you know what you're letting yourself in for. Let's open this up and see what we get. The rubber bands from something else, don't worry. Okay, uh, yeah, the instruction booklet and some bits and pieces. Sprues, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, what's that, eight, nine, ten, hero parts, uh, oh my god, loads of those things, <laughs> and clear parts, so that's what's inside the box, let's have a look in detail at the contents and run through the instructions. Oh, by the way, in case you didn't know, the Bergy Panzer is an armoured recovery vehicle. I think you guys do know that. I'm a big fan of armoured recovery vehicle, armoured engineering vehicles. I find them a little bit more interesting than tanks, uh, probably being ex signal core. I think I like the sort of support vehicles. Anyways, um, this 2A2, I don't really know much about it. I'll probably find out a bit more, obviously, when it comes to the build, because I want to have a look at references. But uh, we've got, you know, the typical Tacom instruction book. You get the layout of all the parts, trees. All the bits and pieces are noted. Um, the color call-out, the paint call-outs are only by Amo Mig Jimenez. So everything is an Amo Mig reference. However, as usual, we've got what it is. So it's like rubber tires, black, silver red you know green wood etc so you can work it out anyways i think it's a pretty standard kit what's the parts count i'm not too sure i'll try and find out later on when i look at the details okay so uh yeah usual thing uh a bit of a drill out there and then loads of suspension components going on the lower hull including the arms. We'll have a look at the fit of how those go on. Make up all your road wheels, make up your drive sprockets. And here's the interesting bit of note, the construction of the, of the tracks, no glue required, no glue required at all. These are excellent type of tracks from the deck models ones I built. So I think these ones will be equally as good. They seem sort of daunting because it looks like a lot of work, but I don't think so. I think they'll really go together quite easily and quickly. Um, okay, then by stage eight, uh, yeah, you've got the upper hull and you basically fill it with all the detail parts. Of course, that is not the way we construct models. And uh, basically, I don't refer to these things as instruction booklets anymore. These are not instructions. These are part location diagrams to me. Anyways, go on and there's loads of detail being added onto the uh, hull loads of it. I'm trying to look for any options, but I don't see anything optional at the moment. Um, there's a light, more and more bits and pieces, pioneer tools, etc. Everything goes on this hull. Yeah, there's it. More stuff goes on the hull. By stage 14, we've got the uh, MG3 machine gun being mounted on the cupola, the commander's cupola. Looks like we've got some photo etch there, more and more details. Um, I think this part, I think this is a lifting frame for the Leopard engines, but I'm not too sure. Somebody who knows about all this stuff, please comment. I'm just a fan of these things, but I don't know much about them. Uh, we've got the blade there for, um, I suppose it's the anchor, earth anchor when they recover. Some jacks being constructed here. And more and more details getting fitted on the lower hull. I don't know what this call out is here. Lots and lots of detail parts for sure. It looks a very, 
a complex and interesting model. This looks like a um, solid like bar, yeah, recovery bar for um, straight bar recovery. Okay, by 27, we're getting on to the boom. There is an errata um, attached within the instructions. So in st at stage 27, it's correcting this here. What does it tell you to do? I'm trying to see the difference. Uh, ah, K42, K37 to make that part there. It's just missed one of the pieces off of there. Nothing big, is there? So how do you make all this stuff? You've got the, it's articulating. So that means that the pistons need to be, it didn't actually call that out. And here, you're, you're constructing the pistons, but obviously if you want them to work, no glue. And then you need to wrap um, string and wire inside the boom. Actually, it's pretty quick. By that stage, it's all done. So, oh, that was a, I thought it was a lot more to it. So basically, yeah, loads and loads of detail on the upper hull. Obviously, it's well covered. And then you build the boom, and then you've got your model. It looks pretty, uh, looks pretty good. Not, yeah, quite a lot of intricate parts, but nothing, uh, nothing too difficult. I think every single vehicle here is Bundeswehr. And the dates are 2010, 2003. We're assuming that these are, um, you know, referenced uh, models, but it's this NATO camo. Uh, this one's different. I like that one. This one's in Afghanistan with the um, sand camo. That's, that looks good. And this one, even more so, winter camouflage looks really cool. I like this scheme. And I gather inside here, yeah, again, um, yeah, NATO three color. And there, there's a nice easy option, just a single color of green for that version. And that's it, isn't it? Some, yeah, interesting schemes, I suppose. Only Bundeswehr, it must be only used by the Bundeswehr. Let's uh, quickly have a look at the sprues and have a look at the detail parts, try and call out anything, anything that uh, piques our interest. Okay, first bits I'm showing you are the included wire. It's flexible. It actually holds its shape. I think we'll be able to use that, to be honest. It looks pretty good. Then you've got string. String, well, not really what I like to use, but I've got different diameters. Um, maybe have, you know, might be workable probably replace it with really thin wire something that i prefer and inside here here's the photo etch fret nothing too daunting there's only uh six pieces of photo etch and uh, you know the necessary photo etch uh, the indicator for the boom arm the grill for the engine and some other things but that looks good and the very small um transfer sheet we're going to start calling these water transfers Stickers. There's the stickers. I'm not going to even open that up. Let's have a look at the parts now. Okay, so no, in no particular order, we'll just have a look at some of the sprues. Just look at the details. Everything looks really finely detailed. Of note, nothing has come off the sprues. Nothing is damaged. Everything seems sufficiently packaged, which is always a plus. I think these are the grousers here. These are the grousers in the holder on there. Some Pioneer tools. Turn that over. Yeah, you've got the... Um, have you noticed that these... Uh, where have you seen this style of wire cutter before? You've seen them on World War II Panzers, haven't you? They didn't change that. Even the clamps look like World War II. I think we would look at providing some extra detail around here. I think that that could have been, that could be better done some other way because all of the tool clamp handles are like solid and a real quick one on this is just to drill them out and I'll probably show you that during the build. Everything else is pretty nice. I like the way they've done this. You've got, this is the first time I've seen this actually. Uh, you've got the um, these hitching points here and they've actually got the pins inserted. That's kind of cool. Looks okay. Let's see what this one is. Yeah, this looks like the uh, recovery uh, rear earth anchor blade, whatever you call it. 
and some other details on there. That's, um, yeah, one piece molding. There's no two halves of the uh, straight bar recovery unit. There's lots of small parts, lots of detail on this one. It's like a good build. Oh, look at all the detail they've got inside there. I'm not even too sure what part that is, but they've got all detail inside there. I think I should have pointed out as well, there's no interior detail whatsoever, nothing of the interior. So it's like a closed hatch model, as I would call it. Let's have a look at this. There's the MG3. Some really fine detail there on that radio uh, antenna. And these are the smoke discharges here. They look pretty good. Oh gosh, I have to be careful. I'm going to knock parts off. Oop. Yeah, looks pretty good so far. Drive sprockets look excellent detail inside there. Inside the drive sprockets, like the look of that. Okay, we're looking at the sprue that's got the recovery boom on it. It's got an anti slip texture on there. Not bad at all, actually. Pretty good. It's very difficult to get uh, anti slip texture right on plastic models. It's usually better if you do it yourself because you need to exaggerate it to show it, but you know, it's fair representation. There's the boom. Notice that the indicator for the um, angle of the boom is a photo etch part, so you can pose it how you wish. The cylinders, of course, are made from two halves, as usual. Looks good. Two sprues as such, which are the road wheels. They look pretty good. Some nice detail inside there. Oh, that's, oh, they've done, they've done a pretty good job here with the road wheels. Usually you see that made, you know, that cap there is usually a separate part, but it seems to have uh, good depth, looks pretty good. All suspension bits, return rollers, all your usual bits and pieces. Let's quickly look at the tracks now. Okay, we'll have a look at the track parts now. It does look daunting, but believe me, it isn't. There's loads of these, first of all. Let's just have a look at these. These are the end connectors, and they're in a flexible plastic now the thing that you need to take care of as well here is weathering in particular because some of these things they just don't rack very well with the enamel products and I'll probably demonstrate that later on and here are the tracks now the only real tedious stuff is cutting every single one of these out but once you've done that honestly things will fly through for you what you do, you've got the, this links, these parts are the center and you need to clip these onto the um, links and then push in these guide horns. It's a bit fiddly, but not as much as you would expect because it's quite flexible plastic. Okay, so it's a bit of, yeah, okay, a bit of work, but yeah, if you don't really want to do tracks like this, and bear in mind, there's no uh, like rubber band tracks included. This is your only option. This might be the only thing that might be off-putting, but believe me, this is not difficult to do at all. We're not talking about, you know, metal frule tracks or having to glue them all together. They'll go together pretty quickly, and I'll show you how it's done. Let's have a look at the hero parts now. Yeah, here they are. One piece molded upper hull and lower hull. And check this out as well. This is what I like to see in models with bathtub style holes or one piece holes. You've actually got the reinforcement inside there. There's no distortion whatsoever. That is solid, like really solid. So there's no flex on anything like that. Everything also, thank, it's not warped, which is the main concern when you get something like this. Detail is, uh, yeah, as you would expect. They've got the mounts there for the return rollers. But as usual, you need to build up all the suspension stuff on there. And then the upper hull. So you get a good uh, indication 
straight away of the size of the vehicle. Nice to see it like that. You know what you're going to deal with. Really nice sized vehicle. And there's a lots of um, detail molded on this upper hull. To note again, they've got the anti-slip texture in these little pads here. Yeah, I think we could work with that. You could probably go towards enhancing it somehow, but um, I'm assuming that that's correct. I don't know much about these vehicles, but I do like the look of them. And then finally, we've just got one other sprue. Just need to show you that we have got clear optics, which is what we expect to see in kits from 2021. So anyways, that's the review. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you like it. Yes, we will build it. It's only a question of when. So this is the bear and see you on the next one.